He is, and I only hope that we all at this age will be half as healthy and young and active as he is now. <laughs> now Thank you very much, Honorable General Secretary Pan Ki Moon, and our gracious host, Ambassador Che Yong Jin and all other ambassadors and ladies and gentlemen. I'm truly honored to be standing here in front of so many world leaders. And if I say I am not nervous, I'm lying. Today I have some message. I have a vision that I have been thinking and saying and living daily for the last 40 years. We must have a vision. Vision is a source of inspiration for reconstructing our society into where everybody is happy with every breath of life. When Helen Keller was asked the question by a reporter, what could be more difficult life than living without sight? She replied, sight without vision. I have been studying martial art for 62 years that's the only thing I did so I don't have too much brain uh, with pinch punching and kicking <laughs> and uh, I have been teaching members of the US Congress for 42 years and I'm still teaching two reasons number one I want to reciprocate what America had done for Korea during the Korean War Second, I knew someday I may be standing here declaring some idea may not be fitting to the established social structures of the day. I think if it really make your sweet word only, I know I'm not going to change the word. Got to be some contradiction. And so when that happens, I know U.S. Congressman, White House friends is going to be testifying that June is not bad guy. <laughs> and so, uh, I'd like to first explain to you how martial art is philosophy. You know, how can punching and kicking is philosophy? It's really, to me, it was nonsense when I first started. Then when I was writing a column for Black Belt Magazine, about 35 years ago, they asked me to write a column justifying how martial art can be philosophy. So I really researched, researched, and come up with this idea. There are seven physical qualities of a champion to become martial artist. In that matter, even any sports, because I consider sports are art. First, you must have a power, devastating power. A human champion must have knowledge. Our problem is education. We need new policy for our public education. Which hero of the American Revolution before being executed by British as a spy said, I only regret that I have but one life to lose for my country. This question was asked to 25 sixth graders in Boston, Massachusetts. Nobody knew except a Japanese boy who just immigrated from Japan. Raised the hand. 1776, Nathan Hale, sir. Boy, everybody was impressed. The teacher was embarrassed because none of American children knew it. 
Then he decided to ask a little more common question so that make sure one of American children can answer. There were another great hero at the Revolutionary War. Everybody was scared to fight the British, but those who heard this great American hero were ready to fight. The speech went as follows. Is life so dear or peace so sweet as to be purchased at the price of chains and slavery? Forbid it, Almighty God, I know not what course others may take, but as for me, give me liberty or give me death. Who said that? Nobody knew except the same Japanese boy raised the hand, 1775 Patrick Henry, sir. Boy, everybody was so impressed. Place was very quiet until everybody heard about 15 seconds later. Damn, Jap. Teacher screamed, who said that? Nobody knew except the same Japanese boy raised the hand. 1985, Lee Ayakoko, sir. <laughs> so the point of this story is, instead of blaming Japanese car importers, let us improve our public education policy. There's an old Korean saying that says, it takes a year to harvest a crop, 10 years to see the full beauty of a tree, and 50 years to make a person. I want you to know how we have 179 countries that are practicing Taekwondo. When I first came to Washington DC in 1962, opening first school, I wrote letters to every ambassador from all over the world, telling them, if your children ever take my Taekwondo, they will make either at least be average and above straight A's, because if they don't make, they don't become black belt. <laughs> and so, when they come after three, four years of mission, they ask me if I could share uh, instructors. I didn't have enough. So I introduced every one of them to Taekwondo Association in Korea. That's how we have 179 countries participating, now 60 million Taekwondo practitioners in around the world. And so I am very proud, I am part of making that happen. And so uh, we have schools in the former Soviet Union, about 65 of them. I did about 11 day seminar, 18 hours a day. After that, 50, 11th day, I had 15 hours question and answer. I answered them, all, in, answered them all, including what's first, chicken or egg? <laughs> when I answered that, they gave me a standing ovation. And then they all signed up unanimously. It's a very impossible Japanese karate people signing up to Junri Taekwondo unanimously, 100%. I'm going, in fact, May 25 to Moscow, two big shows and three speeches there. You must develop financial power as a businessman. Second, physical qualities of quickness. You have to be fast in punching and kicking to be champion. As a human champion, you must think fast. Business champion, you must aware of the quick changing market situations. Third, timing, like Muhammad Ali. You must have a good timing in punching and kicking. And he doesn't kick, but uh, uh, Taekwondo, you have to kick. Now, a human champion must develop a sense of punctuality. And a business champion must develop a sense of on-time delivery, whether it's a product or a service. Four, physical endurance. Human champion must develop a sense of perseverance. Business champion must be persistent. This subject, I can talk for two hours, but I will finish this in five minutes. <laughs> because so much is to cover. Number five, you must develop a sense of balance. When you kick with one leg, you have only one leg to stand. By the same token, you must be rational. You must depend on reason, never believe blindly. Marco Cicero said, true law is right reason in agreement with nature, unchanging and everlasting. What is more divine in heaven and earth than human reason? It is a sin to alter this law. Which means if you go blindly, anything you go, that means you are committing sin. And so, 
I like to say that material civilization has been advanced leaps and bounds the last 6,000 years of recorded human history. And the spiritual civilization, at the best, standing still. In fact, going backward. Why? Because the material civilization is a research based on human reason or science. But spiritual civilization has been researched based on blind belief or assumption. As a result, we have a big problem. So balancing supply and demand for as a business people. We have strength in the body, honesty in the heart, knowledge in the mind. These are the three human qualities. We have to balance that. You have strength, you have a brain, but you don't have a heart, very dangerous. You have strength, you have a heart, but no knowledge, useless. <laughs> you, have a, you have a brain, you have a heart, but you don't have a strength, you cannot function. So we must have a three physical qualities to balance, and when you do that, you are literally humanly perfect. Human perfection does not mean all-knowing. It merely means a person who never makes mistakes knowingly or intentionally. And so, we must develop a rationality and come to the human reason. Number six, flexibility. You have to be flexible, be able to kick high. Now, human champion must be gentle, kind. And don't say, my belief is the only going to heaven, but everybody else is going to hell. <laughs> That's not right adaptability in business champion. Number seven, you have to have a good posture. I'm 76 years old. Do I have a good posture? Yes. I have a reason why. Because I have developed, I have developed a little strap which opened my, my, my posture because, because this is my strap. I just, 10 year research, I got pattern this year. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the Minister of Education of every country to really buy in bulk and, and, and give free to the children because the reason the, that the world is so crooked because people are crooked. <laughs> if people are crooked, the, the mind gets crooked. So if we open your posture like this, you become very confident individual, look you know, healthier and look you know, really better. And so, this is some thought that I've been really in my mind for the last 40 years, that we have to really keep everybody in straight posture. As a human champion, you must be honest. You know, when you have a good posture, when you do sidekick, you look prettier than sticking your ugly rear end. <laughs> and by the same token, true beauty of a human being is honesty. And then, business champion must practice business integrity. Anybody can say, but can you do it? Even though I'm 76 years old, I will show you every quality that I was talking about. First of all, who is the fastest guy here? <laughs> we have a young, fast guy. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, now, the way I test my uh, punch is you turn around, change your foot like this, and you have hand like this. When I throw a punch, I want you to block, okay? Yes. And so, are you ready? Practice. Yes, Boom. All right. <laughs> are you ready? Yes, sir. You didn't even see it. <laughs> Once again. <laughs> Go ahead, block it. Yes. I think he needs motivation. <laughs> Money talks. <laughs> what happened to my oh, $100 bill? <laughs> I know $10 is not going to motivate him. <clears throat> oh, you get that. Oh, here, here it is. Here it is. Okay, I can't trust my wife. Are you ready? Yes. Boy, he looks very ready. <laughs> Now, in order to become martial arts champion, you must be patient. Let me demonstrate my patience through 100 push-ups in 60 seconds.
10. Twenty. Thirty. Forty. Fifty. Sixty. Seventy. Eighty. Ninety. Hundred. One. Two. Three. Next, do, does he still have punching power? So I brought three boards. Uh, with Mr. Einstein, are, are you here? <laughs> How would you come out here? I want you to know that Mr. Einstein is the grandson of uh, Albert Einstein. Oh. You know, it is, it is, I think I, I, I am destined to do something really good. Because we became friends about a month ago, and I was going to ask him to hold this board today. And this week in Time magazine, Albert Einstein is featured. <laughs> and they, they look alike. Yes, they, they look alike. And so he remembered everybody's name that I asked. His, I said, what is your IQ? He said, I don't know. But what was <laughs> my, he said, my son's IQ is 190. <laughs> Are you there too? I'm someplace right there. So I am very happy that we made a friend. Uh, when I gave a speech to the Wall Street Journal, it's about 50 big will. He's one of them. I had the honor of teaching Bruce Lee how to kick and how to punch to a Muhammad Ali. And we call acupunch. I even made that name when he was fighting British champion Richard Dunn in Munich, Germany in 1976. This is what I taught. That's right. So that your picture and my picture face will show them in the camera. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if you punch from way back, anybody can break. Then he can block. But if I come this close, just 10 inch, boom, knock him out. So here, 1021 Club stands for 100 years of wisdom in the body of 21. And I hope that we will establish this organization in every country someday. We can all can live more than 100 years if we live properly, living the truth so they don't have any stress. So this close. <laughs> Thank you. To my age of 76. Do I still have balance? I had a stroke about three years ago. I couldn't even do this. I was born with a heart murmur, and I was doing 1,000 push-ups every day. Prior to the stroke, and when I was 73, three years ago. And when I got, uh, when they had open heart surgery, after six hours they said something went wrong, so I have to go and open again. So it's all together 11 hours, and during that time, a little plaque went into my brain, I got a stroke. Prior to that, our honorable Secretary General saw me doing this about 19 years ago. I used to balance water like this and break three boards and don't spill it. But now my left leg is numb. And so, uh, you know, you cannot make a story in front of a secretary general, right? That's the truth. <laughs> and so, after that, what I say to the congressman in the White House, here's a picture of the White House, here's a picture of a Congress. 
Ladies and gentlemen, I want to balance your budget just as I balance the water on my head. That's why I brought this cup. Now, let's see if I am still flexible. So, if you follow my instruction, you will be flexible in one year. When you watch television, please don't sit on comfortable couches, but sit like me on the floor, and while you're watching the news for 30 minutes, you must watch uh, at least the news program to know what's going on in the world, and you flex your body left and right, so... So let's say you can bend only this much, about 12 inches away from floor to your head. If you stretch 30 minutes every day, seven days a week, do you think you can improve quarter inch a week? Of course you can. Then one inch a month, 12 inches in 12 months. So let me show you how flexible we all can be. I can touch my chest and my body on the floor. So you have to be able to do that because when you defend yourself in the street, you cannot say, hey, wait a minute, let me warm up first. You must be flexible all the time. One of the greatest Chinese philosophers 2,500 years ago, put it this way. A man is born gentle and weak. At death he is hard and stiff. Green plants are tender and filled with sap. At death they are withered and dry. Therefore, stiff and unbending is disciple of death. And the gentle and yielding is disciple of life. Lao Tzu. Water comes from the highest heaven always seek for the lowest and giving life to every living thing. When rain finishes its job, it disappears into heaven as vapor without claiming any credit. This tells we must be humble. And then posture. In order to achieve seven physical qualities of a champion, one must be well disciplined. In 1983, my son Chanu was senior in high school. I read a book called The Making of George Washington. In that book, I found one paragraph which explained that when George Washington was nine years old, whenever his father came in from work, he always stood up to show respect. My son Chanu never did for that for me. I used to do that for my father. I thought that was not American custom, so I didn't teach my son. Now I know that is American custom as well as Korean custom, and so I told my son to read that paragraph. After he read, he said, So what, Daddy? I used to do that for my father. You must do that for me because... I want to restore the forgotten discipline in America and around the world. Let's do that from our home. When he read the paragraph, he said, Daddy, it is going to be awkward. You didn't teach me all these years. I told him, you're going to be awkward not to when you get to use the new way. <laughs> then he reluctantly agreed. Next day, I came home. 5.30 instead of 11.30 because I was excited to receive respect from my son. When I came home, I slammed the door, make sure he heard me. He was watching television. And he turned his around like this. Then he went back to television. He didn't say hello to me. He forgot. Do you know who stood up? My little French poodle, Chlunky. <laughs> Even anymore, when he loves someone, he stand up. I told my son, this dog never went to kindergarten. You are about to go to college. You promised me to stand up. What happened? 
He was very embarrassed because my dog defeated him in human behavior contest. <laughs> I teach my students and their parents three golden rules of teaching. Number one, lead by example. Number two, never fail to correct their mistakes with a smile, not until they learn, but they develop habit or skill. Number three, continually lead by example. If you practice these three golden rules with your children, your children will not be only Harvard graduate, but also saints. So let's make our children saints. Next, what I found, what is universal purpose of life? Why do you live? This question hasn't been answered throughout the history. And I say that answer must be agreed by all six billion people. If one person say, no, I don't agree, then I fail. But I have answer to that. It's too easy. That's why we don't know. The answer is happiness. The universal purpose of life is to be happy. If you live the philosophy of everything happens for the best, you will never worry anything, no matter what happens. For example, about 20 years ago, Florida Flight 80 plunged into 14th Bridge and killed many people. Well, I used to fly that flight to give black belt exam for my school in Tampa, Florida. Let's assume I missed the plane by two seconds. And I had, say, million dollar contract. All I have to be there to make about million dollars. And I missed by two seconds. I said, Everything happens for the best. On the way home, driving home, I heard news saying that very plane plunged into 14th Bridge. If I didn't miss that plane, I would be dead. Another example is my friend John Kim in Dallas, Texas, called me to help him because he just got fired from $50,000 job. I told him, don't worry, everything happens for the best. I will try my best to find your job, but you try yourself too. Two weeks later, when I called him to inform him that I got a job, that it will pay $60,000 a year. He told me, Master Lee, thank you. I got a $100,000 job now. If he did not get fired from that $50,000 job, he never would have looked for a $100,000 job. So from now on, no matter what happened, don't worry, be happy. <laughs> you say everything happens for the best. Anybody disagree? Anybody wants to be unhappy? I'm an expert to make you unhappy. <laughs> and so now we have purpose of life defined. The happiness is our purpose. I asked my dog. He said, I want to be happy. <laughs> and so now we have a purpose. We can put the value. When I don't know the purpose of this microphone, what do I do? I throw it away because it doesn't have any values. We don't know human purpose, so we don't know human values. Now I'm going to define what are the three universal human values. Number one, when are we the happiest moment? We find when we love. Anybody disagree? I know six billion people all must agree. Then next, why do I love my beautiful wife? Because she's beautiful. That's simple. Beauty is the cause, reason why we, we love each other. There are two kinds of beauty. One is skin, the other is heart. Skin beauty can be uh, accomplished, maybe Mary Kay A. Bond. <laughs> but what's the cosmetic for our heart beauty? If you repeat after me and listen to your own voice, okay, then you will feel more realistic. Repeat after me, please. When I am truthful, 
my heart is beautiful. When my heart is beautiful, everybody loves me. When everybody loves me, I am happy. Am I right? Yes. Next. Now, TBL are three elements of good values. You know, I ask many congressmen, sir, why don't we have a definition of good and evil in our constitution in the United States? Everybody said, I never thought of it. So I'm making many congressmen think too with these values. And so these three values, you must take action. Just knowing doesn't mean anything. That's why our title is Mending Troubled World Through a Philosophy of Action. We must take action. Unhappiness. Why unhappy? Because you are hated. Why you are hated? Because you're ugly. <laughs> Why are you ugly? Because you cheat. There's only one crime in the human society that's cheating. Nothing else. And so, when I cheat, my heart is ugly. When my heart is ugly, everybody hates me. When everybody hates me, I am unhappy. That's simple. And so these values are called evil values. Then, we must know but never take action. Now we know what are the definitions of good and evil, but human history began cheating action. If we all become absolutely honest people, we all become divine human beings, then nobody has to work. Really, everybody is going to be a billionaire. Without work, I know you are saying, oh, this guy is out of his mind. <laughs> Did you know Albert Einstein was out of his mind when he first came up with this idea? How about Thomas Edison, Wright Brothers? All these people were out of their mind, but they were the history makers. I have a very clear-cut idea. We are going to make it happen. There are two kinds of motivations. We must be motivated not just for money, but for happy life. We must motivate people not with fear, but with hope. Let me explain to you a story of fear motivation. There was a billionaire in Dallas, Texas, who had 18-year-old beautiful daughter. He wanted to find a courageous and healthy husband for her and decided to have swimming pool party inviting 200 bachelors around the neighborhood. When they all came around the pool, they found two fearful looking alligators. They were wondering what kind of a party is going to be. And when the host came out, he shouted, Welcome gentlemen, anyone who can swim across this pool near the end without being caught by the alligators, have one of the three choices. Number one, you can have a million dollars cash. If you don't like, you can have a thousand acres of land which has lots of oil. Number three, you can marry my beautiful daughter who is my heiress of all my fortune. As soon as his announcement is over, one guy jumped into the pool and came out near the end without being caught by the alligators. Congratulations, young man. Would you like to have a million dollars? No, sir. Would you like to have a thousand acres of land? No, sir. Oh, you want to marry my beautiful daughters? No, sir. What do you want then? He replied, I want to know who pushed me into the water. <laughs> this tells people don't want to have to do anything with Fear motivation. Next, hope motivation. My grandson, 21 year old, my grandson is senior in Johns Hopkins University. When he was four, whenever he came around my house to say hi to grandpa, I give him this, we call Korean chestnut. Ouch, grandpa is hurt. No, he doesn't. It does. I took out a $20 bill. Jesse, if you let me do one more time, I'll give you this $20. He knew it is worth 
to go through one second pain for twenty dollars. He said, "Go ahead, Grandpa." <laughs> so we must motivate people with the hope. So here I found universal values identical not only human being but is the universe. The creator of idea with the truth, beauty, and love of creator created this universe as follow. Number one, energy. Now, the purpose of energy is motion. Purpose of motion is heat. Purpose of heat is light. Then after that, matter begins to produce. In gas form, liquid form, solid form. And then on, upon that foundation, we have plant kingdom, and animal kingdom and human kingdom. And so the study of motion, heat, light is called the physics. Study of gas, liquid, solid is called the chemistry. Study of plant, animal, human being is called the biology. Now, physics and chemistry dealing with the mineral kingdom, we call truth. So universe has truth value. And plant kingdom has truth plus beauty value. Now, animal kingdom contains truth plus beauty plus love value. Human being must become embodiment of truth, beauty, and love, which means this value is not just in the brain of your head, but you have brains in every cell. Your cells must be registered with nothing but truth, beauty, and love. Then you will take action, nothing but truth, beauty, and love, unconsciously. We call that habit. The energy becomes blank. Next production is a human being identical to truth, beauty, and love. So God created human being, truth, beauty, and love. So we also are entity of truth, beauty, and love. So at that time, everybody is going to become a perfect human being, as I earlier defined, a person who never make mistakes knowingly. Invisible God and visible God, human being. And so, not all knowing is a definition of a human perfection. So, if we say all knowing is a human perfection, then that really takes out all the incentive to really try to become a good person. And so, we must really define something attainable. Never make mistakes knowingly. Now, this time, this is the philosophy of a martial art. According to Webster Dictionary, the right means righteous, left means evil or sinister. In Spanish, same way. Even Russian, la revo. In left means la revo, which means sneaky. Even Korean, wenzon, wetan nom, bad. Isn't that interesting? Every language, you know, even though these are created by different people, different times, left means always evil and former Soviet Union claimed that we are left wings. Isn't that interesting too? <laughs> and so, now this time I'd like to ask my two students to come out here. Chumbi! In the beginning, when the universe was created, the energy of God swept across the great void in a definite direction. It was manifested through all things of his creation. The universe of TBL that stands for truth, beauty, and love. Then he molded his crowning achievements, his beloved children, man and woman. Since then, one strange element that has remained a mystery crept into the midst of all mankind the evil force that changed it to be the universe of cheating, ugliness, and hatred. Let us make the left hand the symbol of that evil, as the sinister left hand covers the righteous right. So has evil tried to destroy the good, just as Cain murdered Abel at the very beginning of history. From that time on, 
the history of mankind has known a constant conflict between good and evil as the righteous right and the sinister left clash against each other. It is our only hope that the absolute power of his love and the saints who practice the truth, beauty and love only will someday bring an eternal end to evil. There shall be no more pain, no more strife, no more killing. There will come a time when all mankind will be peaceful and happy every breath of life on the earth. As all people of TBL cast the all evil elements out of this universe, so does the righteous right cover the evil left. Might for right. Come on. Show. 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 He is from China, Tim Wong, Shannon Wong. I asked her, how did you meet the Chinese husband? She says, I'm practicing diversity. <laughs> and so when they married, I told them, when you have your children, your goal is not Harvard University graduate school, PhD, but saint. So I always call them, how is my future saint? Well, sometimes she says, he's not behaving like a saint yet, but uh, he's improving. Anyway, let's give them a big hand. Mr. and Mrs. Tim and Shannon Wong. E equal to mc squared, mass, late in our quantum physics does not agree, but uh, usually speaking, the space is occupied by mass, and the speed of light is measured by time. So time and space means universe. So energy, universe, the whole energy. So, un so universe has three different substances, mineral kingdom, plant kingdom, and animal kingdom. The values are, mineral kingdom has truth value. Plant kingdom truth plus beauty value, animal kingdom truth plus beauty plus love values. So because the energy of God contains the three divine values, truth, beauty, and love, whole universe, and everything that has been created as a truth, beauty, and love. Happy global village. We have many religions saying my religion is the only truth. It's just like Five blind men arguing what elephant look like. Only way to stop the argument is to open their eyes so that they see the whole picture. Every religion has partial truth, but not total truth. What's the proof of that? The way we are living today. That's the proof. Every human being to become the embodiment of truth, beauty, and love, we, we become that. If all men were angels, no government would be necessary. James Madison once wrote, If all men were angels, do I need to take one door fight? <laughs> of course not. If all men were angels, I'm not saying one way or another because I don't want to be criticized by some people. I'm just asking, and you answer that. If all men were angels, do we need Ten Commandments or character education? This is the question that you should have your own answer. I told you that nobody has to work if we all become billionaire. You know, in fact, when I went to Soviet Union, I gave 11-day seminar, 18 hours a day, and Soviet Minister of Foreign Affairs asked me to write an article. I won, I won the 1991, 1991 Article of the Year Award, Award for International Magazine, Andrew Gromyko founded that magazine and my friend Ambassador, Ambassador Piazza happened to be working there. He asked me if I do the article. During the Gorbachev time, communism will never work. That's right then. And I was ready to really be kicked out. But surprisingly, 
one who is in charge of teaching communist ideology, Zunania Society Director, Vladimir Kudunov. He came to see me and asked about a bunch of questions for two hours. And when I answered all these questions, he said, we know communism doesn't work. And he said, when are you coming back? I said, well, I can come back September 1. That was July 15. Why are you asking that? When you come, I like to take you around in major cities to teach all my staff your ideology, happyism. I said happyism is similar to communism. I call it free common positionism. Let's see how that can be possible. In 1929, there are 30 million farmers fed 100 million American population. So each farmer produced food for three or four people. Then, year 2000, we only 3 million American farmers feeding 300 million American population. That means that one farmer produced food for 100 people. If eight hour labor can produce food for 100 people, eight hour labor for clothing are for 100 people much easier because we don't eat clothes like food. For building, much easier because some building lasts maybe 500 years. We need one more labor for everything else other than food, shelter, and clothing. So 100 people for everything else, four times eight, four labors working eight hours can make everything that needs for 100 people to live like a millionaire. 32 hours are calculated to be 1,920 minutes for 100 people. Now if four people work, each has to work eight hours. But if all 100 people work, each has to work only 19 minutes. Are you following my number? That 19 minutes is not even work. Why? Because cooking is an art, dressmaking is an art, building is an art, everything you create is an art. So I am saying it's a performing art of a society. That's what God designed for us. The reason we have so much problem is because everybody is cheating. In result, we have to have soldiers. Within the country, we have to have a police. We have to have lawyers and accountants. These people don't produce anything. All government people, we need the government right now under the circumstances, but not producing anything. They are just watching, make sure nobody cheat. That's the problem. Let's say one hour work, then what do we do? Now eight hours sleep, and then we have 15 hours to kill. What do we do? Dancing, singing, painting, sculpturing, writing, sporting activities, inventing things. That's all we have to do to live like a millionaire for everybody. And then, this is very interesting. I ran into reading this quotation by John Adams. Politics are divine sciences after all. I must, I must study, study politics and war that, that my sons, sons may have liberty to study mathematics, mathematics and philosophy in order to give their children a right to study painting, poetry, music, architecture, statuary, tapestry, and the porcelain. John Adams. That's what he said. You know, those American founding fathers really said everything that we need. I know today America is very unpopular throughout the world because of Iraq war. But we have to honor what American founding fathers had done for human race. That's why I am very patriotic to this country, not because I'm an American or a Korean, but because America really changed the human history the way we are living today. So the above activities automatically will make us do the mental and the physical exercise for our healthy and happy living. When everyone becomes the embodiment of truth, beauty, and love, every human problem will fade away. How? There are three reasons why we have conflicts between individuals, between nations, religions, and groups, and just name it. Just three reasons. No other reason. One is conflict of ideology, conflict of interest, conflict of emotion. So truth, beauty, and love are the solution to this all kind of conflicts that exist in among human race. And so truth, beauty, and love, if we all become truth, beauty, and love, 
in not only in the brain, but every cell in our body, registered in the cell brain, that we are all becoming divine human beings. Dear ambassadors, ladies and gentlemen, the core message of this speech is as follows. Do we really understand what is true will of God? Does he really want us to really believe in him so that we can go to the kingdom of heaven or something else? This is my personal belief that God is telling us, children, would you please forget about me? Don't even think about me. Just love one another. Then you will come to appreciate the source of happiness that you are experiencing. So please, don't worry about me. I'm okay. Just love one another. Then you will be so happy and you'll be looking for the source of happiness, God. Another reason you shouldn't think about me, forget about me is, if I ever show up among you, do you think you have freedom? the most precious gift that I have given to you. If I ever show up, you'll be trembling. Just as in all times, when king shows up, everybody trembled. Why? Because he had the power to control your life. He could kill you. He could make you a millionaire. So, I am a million times more powerful than kings. If I show up, do you think you have freedom? That's another reason that you should think just loving one another. Forget about me. George Mason, one of the wisest founding fathers of the United States, said, quote, Liberty is the gift of God, not the government. And the purpose of government is to protect that liberty, not to destroy it. God's purpose is to give us freedom for happiness and to protect that liberty for all his children's happiness. When I visited the Thomas Jefferson Memorial, I read the words of wisdom by Thomas Jefferson on the wall. Quote, I'm not an advocate for frequent changes in laws and constitution, but laws and institution must go hand in hand with the progress of the human mind. As that becomes more developed, more enlightened, as new discoveries are made and new truths discovered, and manners and opinions change with the change of circumstances, institutions must advance also to keep pace with the times." Unquote. God is telling us, I am not greedy God, because I am unconditional love of God, just like your physical parents are. When you give your life for me, you are expecting something. When you give your life for your friend, you are not expecting anything. So there is no greater love than giving your life for your friend. Now, in Iraq, people are killing each other. In order to come to the kingdom of heaven by showing your loyalty to me, that's big mistakes. I am not selfish God. You don't have to believe in me for you to go kingdom of heaven. Regardless, I love you. If you hate me, I still love you. So forget about me. Just love one another. Let me ask you one more question. There's a King A. King A says, I'm here for you. You're not for me. King B says, I'm the king. You must live and die for my sake. Which is better, king? Of course, King A is. Let's put God in that position. God A is saying, forget about me. Just love one another. God B says, I am the God. You must live and die in my glory. Which is better, God? I think 
If you have common sense, you know what I'm talking about. In 1929, the famous Indian poet Rabindranath Tagore gave a speech in Tokyo, Japan. Among the audience, there was a Korean newspaper correspondent. When he finished his speech, he asked him if he could give the same speech in Seoul, Korea. He said, I'm sorry, I have to go back to India right away, but I will write you a poem for Korea. This is the poem he wrote as follows. In the golden age of Asia, Korea was one of the lamp bearers and that lamp is waiting to be lighted once again for the illumination in the East. Where the mind is without fear, head is held high. Where knowledge is free, where the world has not been broken up into fragments by narrow domestic walls. Where the words come out from the depth of the truth, where the tire striving stretches arms toward the perfection, where the clear stream of reason has not lost its way into the dreary desert sand of dead habit, where the mind is led forward by thee into ever widening thought and action into heaven of freedom, our fatherland, Korea. Let our country awake. Robin Drons Tagore. I would like to express my sincere appreciation to Lisa Warner, the graphic designer, and Jim Warner, the book editor of the book Truthopia, my lifetime dedicated work.